Hello. Well, most of you know me as Mia Isabella. Um, I'm a former adult performer um, and I guess quite popular in that world. I've won some awards and had an incredible journey and I am rebranding and I would like to bring you, my fans, on this journey with me. Um, most recently people have heard about me with things like Grand Theft Auto for Rockstar Games where I played a character in that video game. I've been offered things like a television show, which I'll start filming a series soon, um, a book deal, and um, which is very interesting, this story. I first met my publicist, uh, Lanny Spicer, who's a publicist and columnist for Penthouse Magazine, uh, a couple of years ago, and um, through her book, Confessions of the 100 Hottest Porn Stars, where she featured me, I think, in page 37. And um, from that moment on, her and I had a kindred spirit relationship, and we began to work together. And it's so fortuitous that that's how we began our relationship. At this point, now going to be doing one of a uh, few books that I'll be doing uh, with Lainey Spicer, who is who better to know my journey and experiences the last couple of years than her. Uh, also, uh, another book that we'll be working on will be with Carrie Zuckus, and um, I actually write a lot of erotic poetry and thoughts that I'm going to turn into a downloadable audiobook that you'll be able to purchase on things like uh, iTunes and other formats. So um, this whole book thing uh, is, is kind of like a way where I'm getting a chance to really open up myself to you beyond the filming, the videos, the websites, and all those kinds of things. And another person who very much inspired me that I met was an author named Kathy Anderson from Miami. and. Um, she inspired me. We discussed things about starting a youth trans organization um, and just in general, living your best life. And um, one of her, her book, Change Your Shoes, Live Your Greatest Life, is another book that's inspired me. And um, welcome to my journey. Let's go on a little erotic adventure together. Well, well most women know dating in general is difficult. Um, I, however, never really got the chance to experience that whole feeling. Um, my whole adult life I belonged to two men, either, either as a wife or a future wife. And um, coming out to Hollywood and beginning to learn about that, um, it was very interesting. Learning the motives of some men uh, was a very difficult task for me at times because some secretly knew who I was from my modeling career and had ulterior motives, whereas others saw the innocence within me and sought to create a mask that complemented my desires. It is very much a dangerous world, especially for a girl like me, when there are so many who hide volatile, aggressive, and abusive tendencies behind a smile. And in a world riddled with people suffering from disease who don't value their own lives based on temptations of the flesh and promiscuity. Regardless, I have learned that patience and expectation of perfection is key, that there is no rush, that if someone truly desires all of me, they're willing to share, learn, and grow with me. If they are not worthy of me, they will pass through my life as acquaintances are meant to do. For I have swam with those great white sharks and dined with wolves, a lamb wearing their mask, smiling in the afterglow of their adoration and desire for my consumption. And still, I stand a queen who will continuously perfect her temple so that the one deserving may reign here and reside in perfect peace. Welcome. With that being said, I will read to you a writing, a thought, called The Flesh's Fire and Feast. Now, I wrote this a while back, and I have actually never read my poetry in front of anybody else um, until we did it on The Naughty Show, Playboy Radio, with Sam Tripoli, a friend of mine, and uh, I believe he has a new comedy album out, so check that out. Um, but I read this in the first time uh, on his show on Playboy Radio, and uh, I believe Jason Ellis was co-hosting, and it was for Miss L.A. Speedweed. And, um, it was the first time that I read The Flesh is Fire and Feast, and I believe you can listen to me recite it on the podcast as well. So, there is a stirring within me, and that fire roars uncontrollably. She is a phoenix, and I have learned to contain her for both of our own good. But her misguidance leads to my actions misunderstood. <laughs> her embers stay constantly glowing with each teasing, taunting, sexual temptation. She laughs at me begging to be released. Let me consume them. Mere animals want nothing more than to be used for your pleasure. Filthy, fleshy toys, let us feast. But in their consumption, I lose something. Pieces of dignity more and more fall piece by piece. For they don't hear her voice calling. 
and feel her fire burning in my loins, and I feel it roaring. <laughs> so I bide my time patiently for the strongest beast to put a leash on she, and keep her satisfied as a kitten purring happily. The fire will not consume me, or defeat me, for this time it is I who will win completely. The flesh is fire and feast. <laughs> Well, that was a little heated. It made me blush. <laughs> so I'm going to cool it down and bring back the paste a little bit. Um, share a little naughty thought that I had. I had the most erotic dream about you last night. It was so sensual, sexual, and beautiful. It was like I've always wanted you. I wanted to be connected to you. My spirit longed for it. My body craved for yours. Then you kissed me. I was wet. Confused and lost in lust as you ravaged my body with kisses in every inch and every crevice to taste me and know me in my scent before your body came to have knowledge of mine physically. It was so heated. <laughs> Passionate, I was scared because I lost control and surrendered it to you. You whispered in my ear, you don't know how much I need you. I've always needed you. Can I have you? As you slid inside, slowly, and eyes rolled back into the back of your head when you felt my tightness and how I pulsated, longing to feel my body shiver and quake as you began to moan and take. It was almost like I lost my virginity to you, except this time it was beautiful. You could see it in my eyes that moment, my innocence, and it turned you into a wild beast. My body rocked with yours. It was animalistic. I felt the tears slide down my cheek and you kissed me. You held my body tight and you took it and felt me come over and over, eternally pulsating, shaking, and you released yourself inside of me and to me. With that being said, I would like to share a little thought called the stir. I think I was lounging a little bit out in my field and I felt the breeze begin to tickle me and I don't know, it just aroused a little thought in me, so I'll share that with you. <laughs> The stir, the breeze blows and washes over my body as if it were delicious, indulgent sin, slowly lingering, tingling, sending shivers up my spine, and a sensation within. The birds sing their song and chime in along with the wind's touch as it caresses my skin over and over, again and again. As the sensuality of its touch causes a stir tickling my desires that begin, welcoming the stir within. I am two spirit. I am a butterfly full of flappy wings and soft kisses. Yet a wolf awakening from hibernation, hungry, starving to feast on the spoils belonging to me. Bold yet eloquent in my skin, feeling fully dressed among savages and pretty robes. I am me, living doll and fantasy, sexuality, a duality and mixture in feminine form combined to create me, as you see completely. Dancing in what some would call a mirage, dressed in glamour, being seduced by the pretty cameras and flashing bulbs. It leads me to a thought that I like to call lights in a broken heart. Lights and cameras flashing everywhere, but where are you? And when they hit me, I'll just stop and stare, but from you only a glare. Is, is it that I dare to be bold instead of a shrinking flower as I'm told? that you may shine as false lights do because I am as brilliant as the sun? For my loyalty, all you feel is owed to me as a broken heart? Is that what I've won? It is impossible. <laughs> that I am meant to wilt away for you. So I will go and stay true to me, not you. If the flashing lights are all that I may bask in to feel the glow of love, then that is what I'll choose. I belong to the world, not you. Well, every girl knows that refreshing, beautiful, million-dollar feeling that you have when love is renewed in your life. And um, this little set of thoughts was kind of like a, uh, you know, that breathlessness, that feeling of, okay, this is what I've been waiting for and hoping that, in fact, it is. And being impressed and in awe by the person that you find yourself enamored with. 
So this is called, My Champion Has Come. Did I finally find you amidst the tarnished glitter and gold of Hollywood? After traveling this broken and dangerous yellow brick road, unmasking falsity, did I find my titan bold with the king's soul and a godlike fight with him? He adores my regality, and I can tell will happily submit to me the only fight is for the heart that I hold hostage again. I can see myself filled with joy and service to your love of pleasure to bow to you as your equal. There is no contest if what I behold is true. I submit to you in gladness, no fight. I concede wholeheartedly. You could be the champion I rooted to win all along with it.